Hello friends, today we will discuss the concept and design of perpetual payments. The concept of perpetual payments is not very new. In fact, payment engineers have been producing long-lasting asphalt payments since the 1960s. The research in different parts of the world has indicated that well-constructed and well-designed flexible payments can perform the extended period of time. But the concept of perpetual payment was formally introduced in 2000 by the Asphalt Payment Alliance and it was defined as an asphalt payment designed and built to last longer than 50 years without requiring major structural rehabilitation or reconstruction and needing only periodic surface renewal in response to distresses confined to the top of the payment. Full depth payment and deep strength hot mix asphalt payment structures have been constructed since the 1960s and even earlier than that. And there are several advantages of having perpetual payments. The first is low life cycle cost. And it is because the payment is supposed to last for 50 years and therefore deep payment repairs or reconstructions are avoided. The second is low user delay cost. Since minor surface rehabilitation of asphalt payments only requires short work windows that can avoid peak traffic hours. And the third is low environmental impact. It is mainly due to lesser requirement of materials over the payment's life and recycling of any material removed from the payment surface. The concept of design, there are two most devastating payment distresses and these are bottom of fatigue cracking and deep structural rutting. Fatigue cracking occurs when tensile stress at the bottom of the bitumen layer exceeds the tensile strength of the layer and rutting occurs when there is excessive comp compressive strain in the subgrade layer of the payment. These are the payments which are either under designed or poorly constructed. The normal practice of design is to keep the tensile strain at bottom of the bitumen layer and compressive strain at top of subgrade level below certain allowable values. The approach to design of perpetual payment requires a different strategy than that is normally used in the past. And this figure shows a typical mechanistic empirical design approach. And this is an iterative approach in which the payment response is measured in terms of stress, strain or deflection. And then these are used to estimate the allowable number of loads to failure for a given condition of loading and material properties. Then actual number of anticipated traffic load n is divided by this fatigue life to define the degree of damage. The point at which this damage equals 1 is considered failure. So this is the iterative approach where if you find that this D is more than 1, then you would increase the layer thickness and redesign the pavement. If it is less than 1, you take it as a final design. In perpetual payment design, there are limiting strains below which damage does not occur and therefore damage is not accumulated as in case of a normal payment. And this concept is shown in this figure, in this flowchart. Now, in this concept of perpetual payment design, the payment response is measured in terms of either stress or strain or deflection. And then we define certain limiting values of these responses so that the damage to the payment is, does not occur. And if these values are more than limit, then we change the thickness of the payment layers and then you redesign it. If the response is acceptable, then we take it as a final design. That is the difference between a conventional payment design and a perpetual payment design. 
Here we define the limiting value of these response parameters. We do not consider the traffic as such. The basic concept of a perpetual payment is based on endurance limits or the limiting values of strains so that there is no damage to the payment due to load repetition. And two limits are important. One for resisting fatigue cracking. Fatigue cracking typically begins due to high repeated strains at the bottom of an asphalt layer from heavy loads. And research suggests that there is a certain strain below which there is no fatigue damage. And that strain value is called the fatigue endurance limit or fatigue limiting value. Research at the NCAT test track has shown that payments can withstand bending strains greater than 70 to 100 micron as per test conducted at 20 degrees centigrade. But some countries have found that this is too low. This is very conservative design. For example, in China, 150 micron is taken as the limiting value against 70 micron limit suggested in NCAT test track and they found that this 70 will lead to very conservative design. IRC 37 2018 suggests a limiting value of 80 micron at 35 degrees centigrade temperature of the payment layer. The second is the endurance limit for rutting for resisting structural rutting and rutting occurs when the overall strength of the payment structure is such that large permanent deformation can take place either in the granular base or subgrade under the imposed traffic. Now, IRC 37 suggests a limit of 200 micron as the endurance limit for compressive strain at subgrade level. So what does really it mean? It means that if you can limit the tensile strain at bottom of bitmus layer to 80 microns and compressive strain at subgrade level to 200 micron, then there will be no damage to the payment because of wheel load application. And the payment or the structure can withstand infinite number of load repetitions. That is the concept of perpetual payment. Payment composition. Payment composition in case of perpetual payment is also almost similar as in the case of a normal payment. The first layer naturally is subgrade soil which is called the foundation. Then you have a layer of layer of GSB and then above that you have hot mixes fault layers. The foundation, the payment foundation is critical to the construction and performance of perpetual payment throughout the performance period. The foundation provides support to the traffic loads and is crucial in reducing variability from season to season due to freeze and thaw and moisture changes. Proper design and construction of foundation are keys in preventing volume changes due to wet and dry cycles in expansive clays and freeze and thaw cycles in frost susceptible soils. Foundation may be of natural soil or it may be stabilized soil using chemical stabilizer or any other stabilizer currently available in the market. Next is the granular subbase or it is also called payment foundation. It is provided to give a base to bituminous layer and this can also be either with some cement stabilization or without stabilization. A granular subbase together with WMM can also be provided depending upon the payment, the requirement. The next layer is the base layer of hot mix asphalt. Now there are three layers of hot mix asphalt and each layer has a specific role or function and that must be designed accordingly. The base layer must provide excellent durability and the resistance to fatigue cracking. The intermediate layer provides both durability and rutting resistance and the surface layer must be designed to withstand traffic and direct exposure to the environment. One important point to note is that thick layers of HMA can reduce the tensile strain at bottom of the asphalt layer, but the amount of this reduction will depend upon the mixed characteristics of the layer. And therefore, it is extremely important to specify the right mixture 
in all these three layers. So the composition of the payment or perpetual payment looks like this, that you have natural subgrade, then granular base, treated or untreated, then three layers of hot mixes fall. This is the high bitumen content. Sorry, this is not high modulus. This is fatigue resistant mixture. And this is intermediate layer, which is high modulus rut resistant mixture. And the top layer is surface layer that is bearing cores of either stone matrix of halt or open graded friction cores. Now, to illustrate the design procedure, let me just take one example. An example is like this that design a perpetual payment for the CBR of subgrade soil 7%. And there are two mixes available. Modulus of bitmus layer with VG40 is 3000 MPa and modulus of bitmus layer with hard grade bitumen is 5000 MPa. And the limiting value of strains for fatigue is 80 micron and for rutting to 100 micron. So let us take one trial section and trial section is like this. That CBR of subgrade soil is 7%, provide a granular base of 250 millimeter above compacted subgrade, and then three layers of bitumenous mixes or hot mixes fault. The base layer, which is 150 millimeter dBm of low modulus, and say MR is 3000 MPa. Intermediate layer is of thickness 150 millimeter dBm with high modulus, that is MR 5000 MPa and wearing course is of SMA 50 millimeter with MR 3000 MPa. Now with the subgrade CBR of 7%, you can calculate the modulus of resilience, 17.6 CBR to the power 0.64 because CBI is more than 5% and that comes 61 MPa. Similarly, you can calculate MR value of granular layer by using this equation, 0.2 H power 0.45 into MR support. H here is 250 millimeter, MR support is 61 millimeter, and you put all these values, you get the modulus of granular layer is 146 megapascal. So the payment section looks like this: that you have a subgrade with MR value of 61 MPa, GSB 250 millimeter with MR value 146 MPa. Above that, you have DBM 150 millimeter with MR value 3000 MPa. And intermediate layer is DBM 150 millimeter MR 5000 MPa. SMA is a bearing course 50 millimeter with MR value 3000 MPa. Now let us analyze this section using IIT PAIR software to get the critical strain here at the bottom of the bitmus layer and at the top of subgrade level. Now this section should be analyzed as a five layer structure because MR values are different in bitmus layer also. So one layer, two layer, three layer, four layer, and five layer. So let us now go to IIT PAVE and find out the critical strain values. Now these are the files of IIT PAVE software. First, you have to install Java in your system by clicking this file JRE7U2 window I586. Once Java is installed, then you can start IIT PAVE software you will get this kind of window design new payment section click here now number of layers five and then you fill all the values for each layer that elastic modulus of the first layer is 3000 then Poisson ratio is 0 0.35 thickness is 50 millimeter 5000 for intermediate layer 0 0.3 remains same and this is 150. Similarly, you fill all data for all the five layers. Now these are the data for each layer, for SMA, for intermediate layer of DBM, for base layer DBM, then W, then GSB, 146 is the modulus and 250 the thickness and subgrade modulus is 61. Now we load 20,000 tire pressure, 0.56 analysis point can be 2 or can be 4. If you are interested in radial distance also take 4. Then depth. Now first depth is below the bitmus layer and bitmus layer is 350. 
and radial distance 0 and again the second point at 350 and radial distance of 155. Then total thickness is 600, distance 0, 600 and 155. Now these are because you have taken wheel load 20,000 so it is for single wheel load. Don't make any change here. Submit the data. Submit it successfully. Okay, now run the program. Done. And now here you can see the file. You can see the output. Now this is the output. Now the critical strain values you can see here. The tensile strain at the bottom of the bitmus layer is 0.3916 10 to the power minus 4. That means 39 micron. And epsilon jet that is vertical compressive strain is 86 micron. So both are within permissible limit. If you want, you can reduce the layer of DBM, either intermediate or uh, base layer slightly so that you get slightly higher strain values. That is how it is to be designed. Now the last point is quality of construction. Now while construction procedures for perpetual payments do not differ much from normal batch practices, but it is important that close attention be given to all aspects of the production and placement of the material. And therefore, few guidelines are suggested. A strong and uniform foundation should be prepared. Optimum density in the asphalt mixture should be achieved. The asphalt mix design, production and placement lead to good uniformity. Bonding between all payments layers should be ensured and normal quality control procedures are to be followed throughout the construction. So friends, that is the concept of perpetual payment. Thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your suggestions in the comment box.